And we are live. Welcome to GreenEconomy.tv. I'm your host, Byron McDonald. Today, we're talking everything paper with the Paper Manufacturing Association of South Africa. But before I go ahead and invite our guest, I just want to play you a phenomenal clip from that side. Hi, Gordon and Samantha. How are you guys doing? Can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, there we go. Here's my mic. Um, oh, perfect. Hi, good, thank you. Hi, hi, Gordon. Hi, Byron. Hi, Byron, and uh, welcome, Samantha. Nice to see you. Thank you. Perfect. Samantha, I want you to tell our viewers who you are, what you're about, and you representing a BAMSA today. Yes, thanks, Byron. I am Samantha Charles. I work with the Paper Manufacturers Association. I handle their communications, promotions, and marketing. Um, I have a passion for all things in the, in the environmental space. I'm an avid recycler. I also pick up litter in, in my spare time. And um, I'm also a mom of two boys. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting year. Perfect. Um, today, I'm going to give the show over to Gordon because Gordon's going to ask you everything to do with paper, everything to do with sustainability. So, Gordon, if you would like to take over and yeah, get our show. Very much. Thank you, Byron, and thanks for that, that intro, uh, uh, Samantha. Um, yeah, it's great now to have this opportunity to talk about paper. You know, we've written about it with you guys for, for many years, and thanks for your support over the years at uh, Green Economy. Um, Paper is an interesting one, I think, uh, and we were chatting briefly off air that, you know, when this uh, environmental movement really got started, uh, so around about 15 years ago or so when it came to the fore and, you know, there were all these tips and so forth, what can we do to reduce environment as individuals, as companies and so forth, paper sort of ended up as one of those things, really. It sort of became demonized as a go-to thing that you could do to reduce your impact, to print less, to use less paper, to go paperless. And we see on our emails at the bottom, there's still in some cases a little, a little warning that says, uh, think about the environment before you print this and so forth. So uh, it's a great, uh, I look forward to having an opportunity to chat to you about perhaps why that is. Uh, is it in fact? Uh, a high environmental impact material. Uh, what are the positive impacts? And let's perhaps uh, look at uh, dispelling some of those myths. So we look forward to that. Just by way of an introduction, I mean, let's just talk about paper. We saw the little video clip there that reminded us about all the useful aspects of paper. But perhaps we can just ask you to give us some, some, just some idea of the history and give us some idea of the context in South Africa and the industry and what we do here as far as paper is concerned. I mean, we all know that you know, I, I think about my oldest memory of paper. I think of papyrus and the biblical stories. I think of, you know, the printing press and 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 the start of the industrial revolution. You, one thinks of education, books and libraries, and and uh, having studied law, law libraries and law reports and paper and books everywhere. And I see some books behind you there. Just give us a, just your context, perhaps, to the background, the history, and and the South African context, please. Thanks, Gordon. I think it would take me a few, a few days to go through the entire history of, of paper, but I think you summed it up quite well. And I think paper has a fascinating history. I mean, it's developed centuries ago. It's one of the oldest technologies we have in the world. And um, and I, or we like to think it as, of, as the mother of all inventions. I mean, to think of how what's come through the years. And as you said, the Industrial Revolution, how many of our machine cell phones that are de developed these days were actually designed or scribbled or jotted down on the back of an envelope or on 
um, large scale plans. So I think paper has an, it's a, a golden thread throughout history. Um, it's captured the good moments and the bad moments of our history. I'm reading a fascinating book at the moment, The Tattooist from Auschwitz, which is disturbing immensely. But paper has been able to capture these um, the horrific times of our histories, but also the memorable and wonderful stories of our times. But I think from a South African context, paper um, is made in two ways. So it's either fresh or what we call virgin wood fiber from trees. Um, and these are trees that have been grown um, in plantations. So if you travel to Limpopo and Pumalanga, a bit of the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal, you'll see these trees growing in their, in their rows. And these trees are harvested and then they, they are debarked, chipped and, and cooked into much like a big pressure cooker to make a pulp. Um, and it depends on the way that that um, whatever the the product's been made will depend on how that that paper, that pulp is is made, whether it's mechanical or chemical. And then we also have recycled paper fiber, and our country has been recycling paper since 1920. Um, mostly because we think we ran out of rags. A, a lot of paper used to be made out of fabric and old rags, so I think we ran out of the rags, so we needed to find something else. Um, and then also we use a little bit of a bagasse, which is the sugarcane waste uh, from sugarcane processing. But I think going back to what you say around the myths is that I think we've we, it's it's um, it's an impact we can see, and um, we don't see the impact of perhaps our technology habits or going on screen and and our digital era. You don't see the uh, a paper mill, or you don't see. Uh, plantations that have been harvested and 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 sort of not yet replanted so I think people see those visible signs and think that oh well I must save paper by not um, or I must save the environment by not printing or not using paper and I think that's where a lot of the myths come from and I and if we have to go back in history I think there have been times where um, there have been countries and forest forestry businesses that have not looked after the environment from which, from which they use. So they have not replanted or, and I think, but now um, there's been a, in, in the last 15 to 20, 30 years, especially in South Africa, the forestry sector is incredibly responsible. Um, it's mm. highly regulated, but, um, and all the people that I've dealt with in the forestry sector and paper sector have a, heart for the environment and um, speak to anyone in the environmental departments of your paper companies and they are so passionate about making sure that their footprint of our paper sector is as minimal as possible hmm. yeah let's talk about let's talk about these ideas for a moment i mean so i think from a point of view of the original idea you know um of that paper is bad for the environment i'm guessing it probably stemmed from this notion of deforestation, this notion that uh, wood products uh, uh, were ostensibly not green or bad for the environment because they were harvested from uh, uh, from indigenous forests. And there was this there was this link between paper and deforestation. Uh, perhaps just talk to us about that. Are, are paper products in this country are they contributing to deforestation? Not at all. So if we have to look at the definition of deforestation, deforestation is the removal of trees or denuding land of its trees without replanting. So if we are developing, you know, housing estates or big industrial developments um, and trees are removed and or farming and agriculture, a lot of the in Brazil, you know, the a lot of the, the, the deforestation that's happening in Brazil is not the paper industry or, or forestry products. It is uh, for agriculture, largely, and that's to feed the world. So that's where this sort of deforestation comes in. Paper is a renewable resource. And the reason it's renewable, it's because the trees are replanted uh, mm. within the same year. So if you think of South Africa, we've got about well, millions of trees. I don't have the figures in front of me today, but uh, millions of trees across thousands of hectares are, that are planted for the purposes of making pulp, and paper products and wood products. And only 6% of our total plantation area in the country is, is harvested in the, in one year. And that 6% is then replanted within the same year. So you may drive past uh, a, la a plot or a compartment, as we call them in the forestry sector, on the way to the Kruger Park when you're driving through Nelspreit. But that crop is likely to be 
replanted with new trees within the same year. And so that's where um, our sector does not at all contribute to deforestation. So talk to me about this, uh, you know, so obviously, you know, nowadays we've learned to distrust everybody's claims and what people say. I mean, how do consumers and how do business procurers know whether or not a paper or wood product uh, uh, is negatively associated with things like deforestation or positively associated with uh, with best practice? One of the one of the best ways is to look for symbols and certification symbols. And perhaps the most common one, and I have a look at it, see if it's on the back of my book here. Yes, it is. It's the FSC symbol. Um, which is the Forest Stewardship Council symbol, um, and that helps to uh, make sure that the, the sources of that wood or paper product are certified as sustainable, and they have to meet a stringent criteria, and it's not just about deforestation, it's from a, an, an environmental level, social level, labor level, um, and that these companies have to subscribe to. And then there's a other certifications such as um, PEFC, which is the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, which also helps to provide consumers with assurance that whatever product they're using is from a sustainable, res sustainable resource. And for South African products, if you're buying locally, um, we, we only make paper products from plantation forestry which is responsible and renewable. And 80% of our, our South Africa's plantations are actually certified to the FSC, which is the highest degree in the world, which is fantastic. And also um, from recycled fiber that has been, is, is basically products that we've used and put into our recycling bin and have made their way back to a recycling mill. Yeah, and so tell me, I mean, so one comment from my side, being in the, in the paper, being a paper stakeholder, if you like, as a publisher, um, you know, our printers, uh, we print with a small uh, uh, woman-owned business, and uh, they've pushed back about uh, FSC certification. This is just a quick aside, uh, just because they find it to be overly onerous and, and, and ultimately expensive to operate and to function and to make that certification. Is there, is there any other way? I mean, how else is the industry policing these sorts of things in South Africa? Well, I don't think there's a, a policing as such, and I'm not overly qualified to speak on the FSC matters, but I think there is a lot of work being done at a local level. And there is a new scheme that has been developed called the South African Forestry Assurance Scheme, which has been developed to help smaller timber growers, the timber growers and small timber farmers who cannot afford the FEC certification because, yes, it may be onerous, but it's also costly. So I think there are sort of movements to that, but also to for printers, um, no, I think the, the last point is, you know, you, the, provided they are procuring paper that is sustainably sourced, um, that is probably one of the best things you can do is to make sure that your paper that you're printing on and is, is at least certified to a scheme that pr proves mm. that it's a sustainable me medium. No, great. Well, thanks for that. So, so yeah, so what, we, what we're basically saying there is that perhaps that initial sense of paper being associated with deforest, deforestation, that that's, that that's not really true. And in fact, uh, the advent of these, of these certifications can really prove that and, and really can put uh, the minds of consumers and, and uh, procurers at ease. But another question mark, another environmental impact, you might say, of the paper industry is the impact on water or the water resource. Um, I know, for example, here in Cape Town, you know, the pl uh, you know, pine plantations and gum tree or uh, uh, eucalyptus plantations have been targeted as, um, as, 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 you know, a factor in draining the, and reducing the water table. Um, perhaps just speak to us about the impact of forestation as an, as a, as a, as an agricultural undertaking uh, is it a, you know, give us some insight into that. Is that a high impact? Is it well managed? Give us some sense into that, please, if you wouldn't mind. Well, we're probably one of the most regulated industries when it comes to water. So, um, firstly, plantations, let's talk about a plantation level. So, plantations are not irrigated. So, could you imagine trying to water uh, a few million hectares of, of trees? So, they don't get irrigated, but they do get their, their water from rainfall and from groundwater. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, pine trees and eucalyptus, they suck up all this water, but they also let it go. 
and I think they very much contribute to the water cycle. They are very much they are very important from a soil a soil preservation and keeping soil intact, but also from a transpiration and contributing to the rain and water cycle, so that it all feeds into the, uh, one another. There is um, registration about where we can and cannot plant. So we don't plant in the Karoo. We plant in high rainfall areas a lot, often on hillsides. So you'll see them uh, as you, as I mentioned, like going to Nelspruit. And we don't plant near water courses. The other thing is the sector pays pays for the rain it uses by means of a stream flow reduction levy. So we're the only industry to pay a rain tax. We use it. It's the parochial we, term we use. Because it's it's we are basically reducing what goes into a stream because the mm -hmm. trees will intercept what will flow down the hillside into a stream or down into the valley. So we are we, from a uh, we need before you can even plant a tree as a as a forestry company you need environmental impact assessments, tree licenses, water licenses, water use licenses, and I think that. It's the only time a tree is actually watered is actually in the nursery. We had a privilege of actually a year ago today, we was in Peter Maritzburg and uh, we were privileged to see a, a plantation nursery and how they grow and, and look after trees and what they do to, to make sure that these trees have as the least environmental impact as possible. And um, so I think there, the water, there is a, there is a, there are legacy issues where, um, trees have sprouted up in water courses, but I know that the forestry sector has removed at least 80,000 hectares of trees from that have sort of propped up in riverbeds and wetland areas, have removed those from those riverine areas to make sure that the, the impact on the water tables is as minimal as possible. Yeah, great. And then, yeah, working down the sort of impact list if you like this let's chat about energy and which which really ultimately translates to carbon from a from an environmental point of view so we've we've addressed this idea that uh, we're not chopping down the rainforest which are the lungs of the planet of course uh, to make way for 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 plantation forests but uh, give us a sense of of how carbon and trees and paper, how it all fits together, and what the profile uh, of the industry is in terms of energy and carbon, please. This is one of my favorite things about about trees and paper. And I had to relearn the photosynthesis process with my grade four uh, recently. And, and that's the, the magic of, of paper and trees. So if you remember your, your primary school lessons of photosynthesis, how trees and plants take in carbon dioxide and they convert it into food. So there's a lovely quote that say that trees actually don't grow from the ground. They grow from the air. They grow from carbon dioxide and they store that carbon in their wood fibers. And that, that carbon remains locked up in their wood. And when a, a, a tree is harvested and chipped and pulped, that carbon remains locked up in that paper product or wood product. So if it's in your beams in your home or on in your table and or that you're working at or your paper or your book, the mm -hmm. carbon is still stored in there. And I think um, what's one of the, the reasons for recycling is to keep that carbon locked up for lo a lot longer. And um, uh, sorry, we've got the weed eater going so I can hear it. Um, <laughs> it's, so it's running me sorry, off course. But, um, I think... Uh, the, the carbon, that's, that's, that's such an important part of the carbon story of paper, that that carbon is locked up. And it's such a fantastic, has such fast, fantastic potential for helping to mit mitigate climate change. Because we've got these thousands of hectares of trees storing carbon all the time. And then even when they're harvested, we have not taken, we're not putting that carbon back into the atmosphere. And even as and tree, trees grow and as they mature, they become less efficient, in fact, when they, in terms of their carbon sequestration. So when you're planting new trees, you're almost giving the carbon sequestration a little boost to when you're mm. planting those new trees. So all of that contributes in the in different ways to the carbon the carbon cycle. And yeah, that's that's great. I mean, we all know obviously that uh, trees are carbon sink, and uh, we all know that coal is from ancient trees that have. Uh, yeah, died and turned into coal over the years. Now we're digging them out the ground and burning that coal. So obviously, when if you take wood and you and you don't burn it and you use it, you know that then that uh, carbon sink lasts for for many, many, many years, which is fantastic. 
Just talk to me briefly about the, I mean, is there a metric, is someone measuring this stuff? Is there a value, is there a measure that's taken into account with uh, new new developments such as carbon tax? Uh, how does that affect the industry? Well, I think um, with with in terms of the carbon that, so it, just to go back to the wood, so if, if you had to burn some wood that has come from a tree, it's technically carbon neutral because it's bur it's releasing the carbon that it had already stored so it's not putting back any more carbon than it had it, mm. that was there in terms of um carbon the paper industry has done a lot of work with government in, on the in, in carbon tax and we the s the the s in the carbon tax equation actually stands for sequestration and our, our sector lobbied hard to get that in there so that companies can deduct the carbon stored from their products from the the, the greenhouse gas emissions or emissions um and i think it's important because is the wood has a is a, all harvested wood products have the, the carbon stored. The, there is a lot of work being done with the IPCC trying to get a, the carbon accounting method. I think it was adopted at the COP17 of the Paris Agreement as well, where um, the, the, the carbon um, equation is important, but there's different carbon accounting methods and it's different difficult for us to measure how much carbon is being stored by our plantations. Depends how they grow, at what weight, rate they grow when they were planted. So it's difficult to say how much carbon is stored by our plantations mm. at this point. Mm. No, sure. And so let's just touch, you touched on recycling there. You mentioned it earlier. Let's just talk about that again briefly. I mean, so uh, I also know it's not it's not something that's prevalent in our particular in business because we're not consumer publishers. But I know, for example, that there's this thing called sell through. So publishers will print and this is true of, true of magazines and newspapers, they'll print, let's say, 50,000 copies of a magazine and they'll only sell 30,000 copies, leaving a mass of 20,000 copies of a magazine, for example, that simply get pulped every single month. Now, um, you know, so at the same time, we, in the, in the publishing game, we sort of, people ask us, are you printing on recycled paper? And and actually, it's just not a non a non economical solution. We don't really we're not really offered these papers. Um, so that's just my experience in the publishing sector. But talk to us about the the cycle. Uh, we all we all uh, hopefully those of us who do recycle, we we separate our paper, we send it upstream. What happens to it? Uh, how does it come back? What sort of products are being made? Uh, talk to us about the tonnages and the percentages, if you have any of those handy, just so we can get a sense of how successful uh, uh, paper recycling is in South Africa. Well, it's, it's, it's as I mentioned, it's been going since 1920, and so we have a phenomenal recycling rate in the country. It's 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 something that the industry has been doing for years and years, um, mainly because recycled paper fiber provides an alternative fiber for our paper molds um, we are a tree poor country and we are limited in terms of where we can plant trees and how many trees we can plant so we need to find an alternative uh, fiber that can be used in cheaper products such as egg boxes so um, things that, so if we have to think about uh, what, what happens to our products um, you separate your newspapers and your white office paper, your milk and juice cartons, even paper cups are recyclable in South Africa nowadays. And, and cardboard boxes are, are probably among the uh, highest recyclable paper in, in the country. And that gets collected by either an informal collector that comes around your from your paper in a, your neighborhood every week. And please make sure you separate your paper so you doesn't have to dig through your week old rubbish. Um, and that gets taken to a paper mill, uh, gets sorted into the different bale, uh, into different products. So newsprint will be recycled with newsprint, white office paper will be recycled with white office paper, cardboard boxes, K4 will be recycled with K4, etc., etc. And this not only diverts a, a lot of valuable and useful fiber from our landfills, but it also supports a waste economy. So we're able to reuse that fiber and, as I mentioned, store keep that carbon um, stored in the in the paper but i think the other you know so from a what gets made um from our different products so white paper is a staple in tissue products so as an interesting aside the less we print or the less white office paper we use the more impact it's going to have on toilet paper production 
So, uh, so we, we're even seeing it now where toilet tissue manufacturers are struggling, especially from lockdown, because people have not printed as much. You've not been at schools. People haven't been at offices. There is a high demand for, for white office papers, especially for tissue, tissue manufacturing. And then, um, you know, cardboard boxes will get made into new cardboard boxes and newsprint and magazines, which is often called your common, your news, special news or common mixed waste, will get made into cereal boxes or the or egg boxes or the holder that carries your drink soft drinks or your takeaway coffee cups so there's there's an, a lot of stuff that gets made from recycled paper on the printing grades into of recycled paper we don't make recycled paper for printing purposes in in south africa uh it's there is just not enough demand we actually only printing and writing grades we make in South Africa are your white office paper, which are from the fresh virgin fiber, and your newsprint, school school grades, so your school exercise books, and sort of lighter bond papers. Those are the only printing grades we make, and we don't make the coated grades for your in the magazines and for your high-end printing. It just became, it didn't wasn't commercially viable for to run paper machines um, that needed the volumes that that were just also declining. The, gra the graphic paper market has declined over the years just because of digitization. Uh, you've seen mm -hmm. in, in even in lockdown, it, it was a hemorrhaging of magazine closures. It was it was, it mm -hmm. was terrible to see. Um, so yeah, I think the but there's still other products that we can make from recycled fiber. The advent mm -hmm. of online shopping and the rise in online shopping has also seen uh, like as much as printing has been declined online shopping has increased and so more cardboard boxes are being used and made to to fulfill that need to make sure you get yeah, your everything's work. packaged 10 times yeah you you order you order something this size and it comes in a box this size and yes. there's three boxes inside it's almost like those old gags you used to play you know you you get a gift and then you open it and then there's more wrapping there's more wrapping and you little gift in the middle you know the um, but yeah no it's <laughs> Um, no, absolutely. So we've, you know, we've touched on some of the major impact areas. You know, we've got these global crises. We've got the the climate change, carbon crisis. You know, we've got uh, we've got the biosphere and the and the crisis around uh, around um, species and and biodiversity. And we've spoken about the you know the fact that this industry doesn't really impact these 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 factors. We've spoken yeah. about water, but another massive you know global crisis we're facing right now is is this ad, this uh, influx of plastic into the environment mm -hmm. and there's a, these massive movements worldwide to try and deal with this and i know that in south africa there's some some excellent work being done on the recycling of, the, of plastics and so forth but nevertheless plastic remains a massive challenge you know and ha as a packaging material is this creating an opportunity for paper to make a rebound to say, hey, you know what? Here's a product that's natural, it's biodegradable, it's recyclable, uh, it's a it's a low impact industry that's contributing. Use this product, use this material inst instead of plastic. Is that a is that a factor that's perhaps driving the industry at the moment? Well, yes and no. I mean, the the the, the reality is that. There is a lot of stuff that paper cannot do that plastic mm -hmm. and glass and tin can, um, excuse the pun. <laughs> but I think, mm -hmm. you know, paper has to, in many instances to get paper to act like a plastic bottle, for instance, it has to have layers or other additives added to it. And that may even create another problem for us in terms of recyclability. Fortunately, um, when it's in the case of beverage cartons, so your milk and juice cartons that we're seeing on the shelves uh, these days, they are recyclable in South Africa. They can be recycled. We can reuse that fiber that is in that milk and juice carton. And we can, uh, and we are finding ways, more ways to beneficiate what you call the poly um, layers from from beverage mm. cartons to make new things like roof tiles, crates, pallets, furniture, all sorts of exciting mm. things. Mm. Um, but I think, yeah, so we, we have to be very careful that paper is, is not seen as the panacea for the plastic pollution problem mm. because it, it, it just cannot function like plastic. Uh, mm. uh, I think the problem we have is our waste and service delivery 
um, issues that have to be addressed. Um, you know, how is this? How is the? How are these plastic products getting into our water waterways? And how? Why are, are people not using bins to 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 put in put their plastic away properly? So I think addressing the systemic issues um, need to be also looked at, as opposed to just sort of fixing um, the, the the symptom. Uh, it is exciting for us to see more companies using paper. Uh, we've got, it's lovely to go into a supermarket and find a, plas a previously plastic product that has now got a paperboard base uh, and it's recyclable. Uh, we have to be careful though on well, the bag. think of straws, right? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> as much as I love paper, I don't like paper straws. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, I, I, I don't use straws at all, but I, it's yeah, interesting so to bad. see it was one of the things that people just gravitated towards. You know, people, it's one of these things, everyone goes, no way, how can you have these, these plastic straws? And it's totally true. Uh, and mm -hmm. another pet hate of mine is plastic, individually wrapped sweets, you know, but nevertheless, uh, you know, the focus on straws, they switch to paper so quickly. And I found that heartening. Of course, it's, it's a gimmick in some ways, but it's also what it demonstrates is, the ability of the of the supply chain to adapt and the willingness of brand owners to also adapt and to respond to how people feel and what people perceive from an environmental point of view. Mm -hmm. And and that was a move from paper to plastic, which I think was was quite good. The mm -hmm. interesting thing about that, and you mentioned the, the little sweet paper packets, you know, those are recyclable, but they're difficult to recycle. You mm -hmm. cannot fail mini sweet wrappers in an easy mm. way so that that's where the other trick is so you could make something that is recyclable but it's difficult to recycle and i think that's the other thing it's difficult to collect for recycling you can't it's suck sugar pack sugar sachets they are paper based they are recyclable but it's difficult to recycle them and i think mm. that's where the other problems come in is making sure that if it's recyclable is it easy to collect and is it easy to recycle and i think that's the crunch mm. and, and We've got a, there's a lot of investment that's going into to developing system or um, technology to do that. Um, the, you know, then just switching, you know, paper straws, you know, not my fan, not a fan. So like, mm -hmm. my son said, mommy, it's my, it tastes like I'm drinking out of a cereal box. Um, it's just <laughs> like, just not fun. Uh, and I, we just go, rather go without or you, use a reusable but then forget them at the restaurant or at the bottom of your handbag so then yeah. <laughs> it's pointless yeah so i think what you know what you're also touching on here is perhaps the need for you know for more information i mean i you, you know i also i've been recycling for years and years and years and i still argue with my wife about what's recyclable and what isn't you know and so i think we need to make we need to work harder i think as an industry to to communicate to consumers in particular exactly what's recyclable for example, it's a, and this is another thing you touched on, is this fusion of materials. So we now, uh, I, I learned recently that tea bags, for example, uh, are partially plastic, if that's, if that's, if I'm not mistaken. You've spoken about milk cartons, which are lined with the plastic so that they, so that they last longer and seal better. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fusion, isn't there, between materials? And, and, and we need to understand better what's recyclable, what isn't. Um, so, so yeah, I think from our side, from Green Economy TV point of view, I think we need to perhaps uh, jack up our ideas and get some chase you guys for some more information and get some nice design stuff and and and, and spread that around as much as possible. But what a pleasure! It's been great to chat to you, uh, uh, Samantha, about these issues and and talking about paper. Um, perhaps if I can ask you just from your side, uh, just to give us a, a brief summary, just a, a, a final statement from you. Uh, about the paper industry and touching on these issues, going back to this idea that you know paper has been demonized and perhaps that's unfair. Give us a summary of uh, a con in conclusion there from your side, and uh, and I'll sign off from my side. So thank you very much indeed. It's been wonderful to have you on the show. Oh, thank you, Gordon. It's been such fun, and and we always uh, enjoy busting some myths. Um, sort of uh, the South African version of myth busters, but I think uh, for us the there's two things that I want to leave you with is we have to see forests or plantations because forests, you get indigenous, indigenous forests like the Neisner forest, but you, and you get the Northern hemisphere forests, 
but you also get uh, plantation forests, and these should be seen as crops. Just like we are, when I was driving through Mpumalanga, the macadamia farms are all trees, and you've got the orange farms, they're all trees. Plantation trees are providing us with a product, and that is paper and wood. And I think we also need to be, uh, remember that paper is very much part of our lives. It's there when we wake up, when we go to the toilet, when we make a cup of coffee, when we pour our cereal, when we go to bed at night with a book. And on that, I really would love to read a quote from a book called by Tim Harford, which is 50 Things That Made the Modern Economy. Paper may be on the decline, but it's hard to imagine life without it and hard to imagine it disappearing any more than the wheel itself. It will survive not just on the supermarket shelf or beside the lavatory, but in the office too. Old technologies have a habit of enduring. We still use pencils and candles. The world still produces more bicycles than cars. Paper was never just a home for the beautiful typesetting of a Gutenberg Bible. It was everyday stuff. And for jottings, lists, and doodles, you still can't beat the back of an envelope. Thank you so much. Lovely. Enjoy that. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Gordon. I don't know if you have a final word to say. I ne I hardly keep quiet during interviews. I, I always have something to say, but it was so informative and I've learned a lot because I have so many questions around paper and you've answered most of them. And as okay. something close to my heart or so, being an artistic fellow and paper is where you want to write down everything, not on a, a notepad or on, the, on, on your iPad or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> It's very interesting to write it down on paper. That's that's it. Yes, that's right. So, guys, thank you so much for for informing our viewers today about paper, <laughs> all about paper. So, we would love to have you again uh, on in your future, Gordon. I don't know if you want to sign off with anything or the last word. If not, I will end uh, the show. You've heard enough from me. <laughs> thank you so much, both of you, for being on the show today. Thank you. Bye-bye. You can say bye to Thanks, everyone because we had so many people engaging and people saying you guys look good, very informative. And I, I think there's a lot of valuable content that will be re uh, reshared and shared out. And thank you again. See you guys. Ta-ta. Thank you. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Thank you. That was so informative today. I've learned so much about paper. And like I would like to say also, a paper is a way of life for me because you need, you need to be artistic. A lot of kids nowadays are stuck on their iPads. They're stuck on their computers. They don't have a way of innovating or pioneering because sometimes you need to be able to sit down and be quiet. That's the mo the time you, you're not distracted and paper helps you sometimes. I know a lot of people going to say, but yeah, it's polluting the air and all these things you need to recycle, but it's also your responsibility to recycle. These guys, PAMSA, they're giving you an opportunity to recycle. They're giving you means and ways to recycle paper so take that responsibility also on your side to recycle paper to use paper but i like i like to say i'm not gonna mumble i'm not gonna jam on always i'm gonna say good night and have a beautiful beautiful evening